Uh, thank y'all for having me. That's a beautiful place where you are up there. I just wanted to quickly say this has been a long uh, uh, process uh, talking with Paul and 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 Ted and a number of others who uh, have been involved with Restore Hope and and just understanding fully what you're doing and the impact you're having. You know, my approach is, and I, I talked a lot, a whole lot about it in, in the podcast that we did, uh, that I did with, with Paul. And, and that is that there's really a, there's not one answer. There's sort of a mosaic, uh, a bunch of different things. Um, there's, you know, there's veterans courts, there's drug courts, there's diversion, there's identifying those who would harm all of us and locking them up for a long, long time. There's increasing capacity. And I was very, very extremely involved in uh, the PROTECT Act. Uh, on the other hand, there are people who have a high percentage, uh, a high likelihood that uh, they just need some help getting back on the right track and, um, and can be productive, not just productive, not just survive, but thrive. Uh, I was on the board of Pathway to Freedom for a long time and believe in, in their Christ-based ministries and on the board of, of um, our house. So I've seen that side of it. And uh, so I know that there are a lot of different people doing different things and not all of them work, but a number of them do work. And, and so it really is um, uh, a multifaceted approach. And that's, that's how I approach what y'all do. Um, a lot of people are doing things, but not what you're doing. And, um, and they, and many of them are needed all at once to deal with different parts of the problem and different populations and what have you. So the bottom line is I, I was, as AG, I have access to some funds that I did not have access to, um, in, in previous, uh, well, definitely as Lieutenant Governor. And, um, so I was asked whether I'd be interested in, in helping, uh, support financially uh, what your work. And uh, so, you know, the, the the issue that I have is we, we have two pots of money. I have two pots of money that I can utilize. One is called restricted funds. It can only be used for the purposes specified in the settlements. And that's opioid, for example, is an example of that. And it uh, looks like Sterling just texted me a picture of me. I don't know what that was, but in any event, uh, or maybe a picture of y'all, I can't see it, but Sterling, who's there with you. Uh, in any event, the, the restricted funds are exactly that. They're, they're restricted. Uh, they're restricted to certain uses, and uh, they're not restricted to any good idea. They're restricted to a particular definition, and, and then there are unrestricted funds, which can be used at my discretion for pretty much any uh, purpose. Well, the problem is the unrestricted funds are extremely restricted, meaning we don't have many of them. And, uh, I, you know, that's just the nature of it. And, for example, the opioid money is, uh, is restricted, and we have a lot of that. We have, or at least we're going to, uh, as, the years, uh, as the years pass, we'll continue to get money in there. So when I get a proposal, hey, can you give a million for this or 500000 for that or whatever, Sometimes I say, oh, this would be great, but our restricted fund, our unrestricted funds are very limited. And so I would, I really need to use those for this, but I don't have that much. And there have been some uses of those funds in the past that, that I'm not c continuing with. And so that's made them more available, but they're still extremely limited. Uh, and so I'm always asking questions to see if there's some way to fund a request through the restricted or maybe a combination. And so uh, I was asked for, I think, two million. Is that right, Paul, in this case? And so what I'm committing to today is a million. We're gonna we're gonna do uh, a combination of restricted and unrestricted. And and to to let you see what's going on sort of behind the the, the curtain and the process, I ask up front, how much of what you deal with can be attributed to opioids? And I need to know that because that number will dictate how much of the funding I can pull 
from the opioid settlement funds. And there was an estimate of about a good faith estimate of about 80 percent of people in, in, involved in your program in some way uh, had some sort of uh, interaction, abuse, whatever, with opioids. And so what we're doing for the first million, I'm committing to the first million today, we're going to do uh, 800,000 from the opioid funds and 200,000 from which are restricted and 200,000 from the unrestricted. And then assuming progress and and all of that, we'll do another two million down the road. That's the plan. Um, I will tell you, there's no statutory requirement for me to, and how I give out money. But I decided that I needed to build a record. I need to be held. I need to be um, accountable to the public. So if someone comes to me and says, "Why did you do this?" The law doesn't really require me to have anything. But I didn't want to say, well, someone asked me in an elevator, I thought it was a good idea, so I'll cut my check, which is really all you could do that. So what I said is, look, I want a letter. I want a proposal. I want as detailed as possible. And I want to follow up in a year with everybody I give money to and say, what happened with the money we gave you? because we owe that to the taxpayer and government generally, federal government with the, with the COVID funds and, and government generally is really bad at that. They give out money and they move on to the next person. And then you see a story a few years later about how this was done and that was done and proper. That's not going to happen here. But what I am showing consistent with this approach is an interest in what happens next, right? I don't want to just give money away. I want y'all to be successful. I want to know how I can help you be successful. So uh, this can be an iterative process where we communicate along the way. And if you hit roadblocks and say, you know, we're really limited because of this law. Or we're really limited because we don't have this relationship. Although I know you're going to have all the relationships you need with Ted Dickey and, and, and some of the other people you've got involved. But I want to be a part of that process so that a year in when we say, Hey, let's talk about what that million did. We don't hear about any any obstacles or problems then. We want to hear them iteratively. We want to hear them throughout the process in a conversational kind of way so that we can take steps to address them. Um, so anyway, we're going to give a million now and y'all do your good work. And then um, and then we'll we'll revisit this in a year. But my my, my hope, my plan is to get, get the next tranche then, but maybe we can dream even bigger. Maybe we can achieve even more than you planned. Maybe your plans next time can be amended in a year to think bigger, to do more, to cover more space, to see more people uh, transition. And I'll leave you with this. You know, I tell a lot of people, I tell uh, a lot of my conservative friends, I said, we ought to own, we ought to own this space. Um, because people like me have a number of reasons why we want to see people, either those who have been in prison or those who have struggled uh, sometimes with the law or whatever. There are a number of reasons why we ought to be for helping. Number one, there but for the grace of God goes high. That's number one. It can happen to any of us. Um that's sort of the that's the Christian approach. But if that doesn't appeal to you, here's some practical reasons. Number two, they're coming to a neighborhood near you. Do you want people stealing your tools or knocking on the door and asking if they can borrow them? I think we know the answer. We want people to thrive, not just survive. We want them to become productive members of society, right? So the number two one is they're coming to a neighborhood near you. We want them, we, we want you to be safe. We want you them to be good neighbors, productive neighbors. Next, number three is, it's cheaper. We want them paying taxes, starting businesses, growing their family, growing their business, generating revenue, not taking. So we don't want them surviving. We want them thriving, right? And then number four, we don't have enough workers as it, as it is. We're basically what economists call full employment. 
What that means is everybody, now that doesn't mean everybody's got a job. It means everybody who wants a job pretty much is, is, is getting a job. It's not perfect, but that's pretty much where we are, full employment. So we need more people with certain pedigrees, more people you know, with welding and, and truck driving and license, uh, licensed in a number of areas, professionals, whatever, IT, we don't have enough, STEM, we don't have enough. So we need, the, we need more people in the boat rowing. And so there are a number of reasons we need to be for this. I'm going to let you all work out the details. Um, but I look forward to seeing the great things you do. And I actually look forward to you asking for more money than you did this time next, next year. Because I want you to have so much success that you aspire higher and you dream bigger than, than you already are. So, um, and I want it where you don't even have to ask. And I'm so convinced by what I know you've done and the impact has been so widely seen and known that it's a, it's a given. It's, a, it's an immediate no-brainer. No so glad to be able to help. Don't give me the credit. It's taxpayer dollars. It's public money. Uh, it's not mine. Uh, I'm just trying to divert it to a, to a good uh, direction. And, um, and so I appreciate what y'all are doing. I hope it makes a big impact.